Hey, Link, can you hear me? Hello, um, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'll, 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 I'll be muted unless I talk, but I'll be listening to everything. Hey, Niles. All right, thank you, Ed. Okay. You mean uh, which screen? Yes. The one that we're looking at, I guess, because it's going to be um, me and... Well, actually, there's, gonna, there's one person in the audience, so I guess. Can it be in both screens or just one of them? Okay. The screen behind me, you mean behind us? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Except then, me and uh, Sarah, who are here, won't be able to see them. But um, oh, it does both of them. They're both linked. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So uh, right now, we we've got Ed. He's in. So okay. um, I think that's all right now. So you might as well you might as well go ahead and um, set it up because uh, we'll be starting in about five minutes if we can. So, okay. So All right. Good. We have else in yeah, Susan. Uh, that's Susan. If you can click on her letter in, yeah. Yeah. That's that. All right. How many others are we I I think Adam Soroka said he's going to try to do it, so he should be coming. And I don't know if Jim's going to or not, but nope. As far as I know, nobody else is going to. So. Okay. We just need well, we need one more, I think, right? Because it's is this seven or eight? Okay, All right, Susan's in. I can see her. So, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Thanks. Bye. He's gonna put it on both screens in about two minutes, so should be good. We're on uh, YouTube already, so. Hey. Oh, hey. Can you hear us, Susan? Was, yeah, I can hear you. One of the things I was going to say is the um, when you're asking about flipping around the meeting dates, I think it's fine where it is for me. I mean, every now and then I might have something, but I think we could probably keep it where it is. Yeah, okay. But, you know, I think we have to just look at as much as we want people to be a part and to participate, we just have to really see what their time availability is. Yeah. That's right. That's uh, yeah. Sarah and I were just talking okay. about that. That's right. Yeah, that's why I, I I was listening as I was chiming in in agreement with the two of you. Okay. All right. Um, I think Adam's going to join. He probably will not be able to speak, but that's okay. That'll still mean we have enough members to go ahead and uh, have a business meeting. So why don't we go ahead and start? And he he should join us. And when he does, then we'll go back to the business, which is basically adopting the minutes. <laughs> and then we can go on at that point. Um, so the, I think you all have the agenda. I think, Maria, you've got a copy of the agenda? OK. Um, I think the first thing we wanted to just, I wanted to touch base with you guys one more time and see what you want to do on this. Um, we have a draft statement on the operating budget. And we have the principal statements about what they want to see. Uh, I've talked to two of the principals. I think they really do want, want do people something. to know what their yeah. their issues are. Um, so that's good. And I talked to the PTAs. I sent it to all of them. Mm -hmm. I only got one response from Sue Ann Roberts saying this is good work, but she didn't okay. 
have any other comments, so I think they know about it. Yeah. So the only I issue then. They have to walk a very fine line. They're not allowed to actually weigh in on. The principals? The, uh, the, no, the PTA. PTA presidents. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's good to like notify them, and then if there's something that they're concerned about, they would maybe share it with their people so that parents could reach out to us. But I think perhaps they are limited in, in their. They do of, have a cluster coordinator, and that, you know, I was that for a while. and. Um, so that person can, in fact, does testify for the okay. cluster. And she had it too, Hannah okay. Donard. Good. As far as I know, in my note to her, I said, if you're, test if you're sending something, that's great, mm -hmm. but I'd like to make sure we're in sync. And she didn't say anything, so I assume okay. it's fine. Yeah. So we've touched base with everybody. Yeah. I think we need yeah, to touch really base. The only issue then is I just want to make sure everybody knows this. Um, it's, and you've been seeing it, I'm sure, but it's gotten a lot hotter since we met. Yeah, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting text messages every day that are like, <laughs> Um, kind of doomsday if this budget passes here's what's going to happen yep so I mean there's all the unions have weighed in um, they sent a letter yesterday in fact saying if you cut the tax increase a certain amount it'll be too low so we can't actually do the salary agreements that we've already agreed to right. with MCPS and the realtors have weighed in the developers have weighed in so base, both sides are in yeah so I'm only just putting that out there to say that uh, I don't think what I, we have said is will upset anybody. I, we're not taking sides on the tax issue or on the overall budget issue. We're just saying we have a focus. Here it is in, it, in our estimation, whatever is done, how you fund it, these issues need to be addressed and our principles lay them out. We want them addressed. Yeah. If you guys are comfortable with that, I think we can go ahead and send it. But. Yeah. No, I'm ready. All right. I'm Ed, ready. are you on? Well, Ed probably may not be able to weigh in, but. Um, so I just want to make sure we're on the and same page. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I, I'm listening. I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah, and, and like we said at the last meeting, when you send it, just um, make sure that all the other commissioners get CCC'd. That's I will do that, do. absolutely. Or it, it's it's fine with me if, if uh, one of you guys want to, you or Ed want to send it to, that's fine too, however you want to yeah. do it. Okay. Yeah. So I'll CC them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then this CC weighed also on it. And Niles. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. And, and Niles, too, because we probably should put it up on the website. That's what we should should be doing so the Fair Access uh, website yeah, so has it. so that way we're, we're open and transparent. Yeah, good point. Okay. Um, so a quick uh, overview on White's Ferry. Um, Jim and I met with uh, Chris Conklin and Emil, who is one of his deputies, and Dale Tibbetts last Monday. And the intent was just to, <laughs> we have these meetings every month and they have a cast of thousands. So we never really get much input from Chris and he won't answer questions directly. So we just said, look, we want you to give us as much detail as you can about what has been offered yeah. to Libby. What has she rejected? If you can tell us why, yeah. what else you think can, be, can happen on your end? Yeah. Have you met with Chuck Coon? All those kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. I think the bottom line, honestly, was they told us that their legal interpretation is that they cannot own an easement in another jurisdiction. So they can't directly pay a per car fee to Libby and own the easement. It has to be Loudoun County owning the easement. Yeah, but she doesn't want to sell it anyway, so why are they continuing to pursue that, that line was, of inquiry? That was the second point we made, which is, okay, <laughs> so like, you, you okay. and so is that all you offered her? And they said yes. They've never offered her a per car fee. Um, <laughs> so, and they said they couldn't do that because that's not how transportation programs work. They don't do long-term leases like that. And we said, wait a minute, you guys huh. lease buildings right now. Yeah. I know you do. Well, yeah, but that's not a transportation program. That's a facility that we use. I said, well, this is a facility you're using too. Yeah. I, bottom line is they think they, didn't, they don't really want to take the bull by the horns and do this. That's our, our yeah. impression, that after yeah. all this time, they yeah. finally were honest and said, you know, we're not going to go further than what we've already gone. Okay. Which, Which is offering a deal that we know that she's going to turn down. Right. So. <laughs> but this frees us up, I think, to just yeah, say, okay, maybe it's, it's Keith Miller. Maybe there's other alternatives, and we can talk to her directly, in my view, and I think we can also talk to Chuck Coon directly. Did we, uh, did we run it by Jay to find out, is it legal for the town of Poolsville to buy it? Is that uh, an option? We did have a conversation with him. He's not an expert in the yeah. area. Uh, he, needs, uh, to, he has a council that he says 
we'll tell okay. him definitively, but okay. his off the cuff belief is, and he said, I've, I've had other jurisdictions that have done something similar. They uh -huh. own, for example, water systems are normally, believe it or not, not public. They're usually private, private mm -hmm. companies run them. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, uh, he mentioned one, I think it was Cambridge, Maryland, actually owns a water reservoir that's in another county. So that's okay. an enterprise operation. He said, I yeah. think it's doable. It's not illegal under the state okay. of Maryland Constitution for you guys to do this if you want. So I don't think we, uh, at this point, have you know done a lot of work. But I think the answer is there are other alternatives that don't yeah. involve the county. Yeah. The other thing, though, Sarah, to your, you mentioned the, uh, the letter uh, when it came from the state of Maryland that that yeah. was a useful and helpful. And it probably could be because funding-wise, yeah. We may well need their help and... to get this done. How yeah. are we doing? Absolutely. So. It, it sounds like the two options in front of us really are then, I mean, I'm sure there's others I haven't thought of, but Revenue Authority, Keith. Right. And you said you've already brought He's, that up and you're waiting to hear back. When we met with Chris, and we haven't talked to Keith since then, he said Keith is actually actively already talking to the two parties okay so That's and he's trying to get news. the numbers is what he's trying to yeah, do yeah. because he has to figure out can i do it yeah financially okay so it sounds like that's our next lead to kind of run down mm -hmm. and then if that is not going to work then i think we need to seriously explore like what would it look like for right. the town to buy it and and operate it right okay which actually when you think about it in terms of promoting white's ferry promoting events promoting our area yeah might be the best so option but <laughs> it's because we are the only ones impacted by it yeah. nobody else cares <laughs> right and the town honest if it did it it would be a contractor that would run it but yes. that's still I mean, just like you do with trash service but yeah so it was a, a meeting that in some ways was not what we were hoping on the other hand it was at least we got clarity and so yeah. we know now what we have to do i think at this point um, and do you have any sense of a timeline from Keith? No, I did not. I haven't talked to him since then, so we need to follow up with him and find Would out. Would you, you know? feel comfortable following up with him yeah. just to get a sense of yeah. um, how, when he feels like he'd be able to give us some indication as to whether this is even a, a feasible thing, you know, that we could continue to pursue? Right. All right, uh, so that's White's Ferry. Um, just a quick update on, I think uh, we had a great Spring Fest, and I think the main thing that was, from our standpoint, from Fair Access Committee standpoint, that was important was we actually got three council members to come out, and they had a great time. We also had good exchanges with them, but just the fact that we got the president of the council, Maryland, our district, but also Andrew Freitz in here mm -hmm. was pretty yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, great turnout. And also had all the commissioners there, which is great, and they all interacted with them too so that was good and it was covered by yep. the media media got Some it good um, articles about it the my mc media yeah. piece was well done very short but it was great mm -hmm. so um, and bethesda magazine right also mm -hmm. was promoting spring fest and talking about it so in several different places we're on the map <laughs> yes it's great okay um support letters i just wanted to make sure we you guys remember we did send two letters of support one was uh to to the county executive Sorry, back about, up one second yeah. the district 15 meeting anything oh. to report from that yeah there's wasn't much to report honestly these meetings are not um substantive That's there what I was hearing from people <laughs> i mean basically it's to talk about what they have accomplished and they did accomplish a lot during the legislative session okay um but uh there was about 30 people there. Many of them are activists in the Democratic Party, obviously, uh, and in other jurisdictions. And so I decided to give them a pitch on fair access while they were there, which you know, basically telling them what our yeah. objectives are, what our key issues are. And we obviously did highlight White's Ferry. Yeah. So whether that makes any impact, I don't know. But okay. the only person who attended from District 15, honestly, was just Brian. That was it. Andrew <laughs> Friedson came briefly but it was just Brian I don't know what happened to the other council members I do I did talk to Lily Chi and she said she was just so strung out with events she decided to take off that day yeah yeah <laughs> no I get that um so the rest of the people in attendance were caucus members you're saying they were basically democratic caucus members okay yeah that was it okay but they're also activists in the community so that's good yeah. from all of good the connections county. to make yeah okay Um, we'll talk about that in just a minute. In fact, there was just a hearing on it today, and we'll give you some updates on that. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, that, yeah, that was right next to the District 15. Update a mobile van from. Oh yeah, okay, I didn't see that part. Um, back a year or so ago, when we were pressing the county executive mm -hmm. for health care support for our area, he said, "I will work on it." So his proposal, HHS's proposal to help us was to get a mobile van funded and out here on a, at least a monthly basis. As kind of a, a stopgap interim. Stopgap. Okay. Right. And what it would do and who, how it would be staffed, it wasn't very clear at that point. Okay. Uh, today there was a hearing with HHS, um, and it was all, their funding for their entire budget. And Marilyn Balcom asked specifically about the mobile van, what its status is, have they actually purchased it, um, Chris Rogers from HHS is in charge of it, said they have purchased it, but it, he initially told us it would be here this summer. Now he's saying probably later this fall, early next year. <laughs> he also said that they've hired, they're supposed to have five people, and I did, he didn't list all the staff, but I know one of them is a doctor, but the, I think there's a nurse practitioner, but I don't know the other three people. Okay. Um, they have four people already hired, but they hired him with ARPA funds. <laughs> And Marilyn, that's what Marilyn really weighed into. She said, look, you've got four people on staff. They're hired with ARPA funds. So what happens when those run out? And they do run out this year. We need $711,000, according to Marilyn, to fund that van in terms of staffing. And that was really the debate today was uh, to try to lock in that money so they will have staffing as well as the van. The van's paid for. It just hasn't been delivered yet. It's being outfitted. What are the, the five people that they hired? What are they doing in the interim. I don't know. It, it, it wasn't actually discussed during the, mm -hmm. the uh, debate. But uh, I think the thing that concerns Katie and Melissa, rightfully so, is they've got four people, they've got a van, they haven't talked to Melissa or Katie at all about yeah. what are the needs out here, what are our clinics showing we need to have. Yeah. Because one of the things and we coordinate know... coordinate with the work that's already being done. Right. And not uh, interfere with it or actually maybe uh, undermine it in some yeah. ways, not even knowing you're doing that. Yeah. So uh, Marilyn just uh, texted Melissa and I and said she understands that. She is going to push to get a meeting with HHS staff and specifically Melissa, but also the provider she's working with. To Who's have in a, charge of this program? It's actually in on HHS under Chris Rogers. He's the so deputy. So ultimately Chris Rogers right. is, is in charge of this. In HHS, okay. yeah. Okay. So um, it's convoluted and confusing which it often is when you if these agencies often don't give direct answers they're very opaque yeah. so they haven't been they could have answered Marilyn's you know, questions very directly but they were very opaque and she asked specifically what about dental and they said uh, no one of the people said it's not going to have dental then Chris Rogers said no no we're going to have some incidental basically teeth cleaning is what he was saying and checking your teeth but in terms of anything beyond like extracting like the, a tooth the people who actually need the work because they're in pain they by filling have, the tooth that yeah. will not be done in this doesn't sound like mm, okay. so yeah that's what i mean it's opaque i mean first it was no then he said no it'll be something but it won't be what you actually need you know, ex extensive <laughs> dental work it'll just be checking and cleaning is what it will be huh so okay. yeah that's why there is a need for a meeting so we can actually under understand what this thing will do so that and been, it won't interfere but it actually will help has that been scheduled then with katie and melissa it hasn't yet but Marilyn is certainly on Marilyn's going to work on that yeah. okay so, i'd like to be included in that if possible yeah No, one could did not apply. They did not um, ask for the van or ask for funding for it. It's actually the county that did it in response to what they thought was a need that our area has, and it is a need we have. But I think it was just kind of, in my view, it was kind of the county executive said, "Do something." HHS's response is, "Oh, we'll we'll get a mobile van." And so the next time the county executive talked to them, they would say, "Oh, yeah, we got a mobile van. It's going to be in Poolsville before too long." So. <laughs> but this is separate from the the grant right. that WOMCO has, where they, they, the they, are, grant. they are setting up the clinic still at the church, and they do have a dental van. Right. Oh, okay. so yes, they do have an, as part of that grant with WOMCO. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and it's very popular. Yeah. It's been well attended. But that's not something the county's done. That's something that we've done through the HIF grant, so... Is that information updated on the town website? 
on the uh, well, she, Melissa always puts up a notice both on the electronic sign okay. and she puts it up on I mean, it's, it's up on the website too that yeah, we okay. have a whatever the clinic is that's coming up. Yes, I've seen it on the sign repeatedly, so I know they awesome. do it. So, um, I, and I was thinking more not that not the notification part, but more of the like, hey, letting the town know that this is happening and it's successful more of like the reporting on the report on how the work is going oh you mean like, is there something that's going to overview what the, the results have been so far um yeah yeah i just think um i think that's one of the ways that we continue to uh encourage community support like when WOMCO maybe is looking for additional funding for programs like this is to give regular updates on like we've had this dental van every month and we've had it 90% full each month. And I'm sure it is. Yeah. I just didn't know if that's something that we just wait for once a year or if that's something she, that the she town... has to do a report under the HIF grant and sure. it will be due in June. So I know she's going to have a full report because HIF requires it about what they, who they served, how many people they served, what it was they served them, that kind of thing. And is that so. linked to the town website? It will be published, and uh, we could certainly put it on the website. Sure. I think that's more of what I was saying. Like, yeah. how can how can we as a town help? I don't know. Raise awareness right. about what's happening. Oh, certainly could do that. Certainly could yes. do that. Okay. Um, yeah, the HIF report is. I think June is when she's supposed to have it because that's when the grant was actually awarded. So, on town website. All right. Yeah, the the uh, the budget hearings this year are. I mean, it, the, the HHS was not the worst. I've seen th there were blow ups today, and people are really getting tense because they're the funding is so tight. stringent. Yeah. The tax thing is hanging over everything, so politically it's really mm -hmm. charged. And uh, I mean, I saw Will Jawando. He he's a very cool guy. He never gets upset, but I saw him get upset yesterday and he was because they weren't telling they weren't they said they were going to do something and he said you told me in the hall we we're going to do it last year and it's still and you came back and it's not even done why is this happening so i think the tension is growing and um it's going to make our job harder for the community center and a lot of things <laughs> in the and coming when you year say tension between who and who mostly I think it's mostly the, between the county executive and members of the council because there, there are things they want to get done, but also right. I think it's just the communication. It just seems like it's not mm. as good as it could be. Yeah. So that, that particular issue, it was very clear. He had an exchange with this, the woman who was testifying, and I forgot which department she was in, but, and he said, you told me this, and it's not happened, and you come back again for more funding, and it hasn't happened. Why should I? Yeah. He was going to support it, and he ended yeah. up saying, I can't do it. You're not... Because I gave you funding before, and then yeah, and you what you said you were going to use it for, you didn't actually use it right. for. Right. So mm. there's a lot of tension. Um, mm. Anyway, <laughs> but I'm only laying that out because I think when we come to talk about the community center next this coming yeah. summer, we got to do a lot of work, and it's yeah. really going to be hard. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go into the support letters just so we can remind each. Uh, so we have two letters that we sent in support of. One was uh, in support of the Rosenwald School. Mm -hmm. um, Greg Williams, uh, two weeks ago, as you may recall, may know, uh, has been appointed to as be the new delegate for District 39, but he's not leaving office till September. And I, okay. I, I jokingly called him and said, "Congratulations! I'm sure you forgot about us already because you're now a delegate." And he said, "Nope, I'm not a delegate to September, and I've got the Rosenwald School okay. signed is on my agenda, and it will be done before I leave office in September." Okay. <laughs> Good. Well, and I, you know, Greg's a good guy, and I think he'll follow up on it. But I think we need to continue to keep contacting him, putting pressure on him yeah. to make sure that it happens. Can I ask um, at the uh, at HMD when they did the program about black um, public schools and the Rosenwald School was discussed, and the petition was created for residents to sign in support of. Um, we had started filling out those signatures in support for this petition, and we were told at that time that the town was going to have a link 
for people to download it. Oh, really? Okay, well, we should follow up with Niles then. I don't know. Not that I'm aware of, but I can follow up with Niles and ask him about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Marie. It would actually be a good thing to yeah. uh, send in in the next month or so, just as another one of those reminders. <laughs> so yeah. Is I'm curious if there also is an organization that gives communities grants to maintain and <clears throat> and or mark. The Rosemont schools, in in the same way that um, there's this, um, the the lynching, yeah. um, project, lynching. yes, and and so with the support of this larger organization, we're able to to get a marker there. Um, I'm wondering, mm. given that there's actually a lot of really well preserved Rosenwald schools, and there's and they've made it into a national park or something, right? Yeah, there's I'm just a, yeah. I'm wondering if there's some type of Grant funding, and that's again something I can bring up to Niles. He's a master of grant searching. Yeah, yeah, it would be a good idea. Um, I think if the county placed it, you would hope they would actually maintain it, but yeah, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> what the wording would be? No, no idea. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Hmm. And then uh, we sent a letter in support of uh, John Rolls to be on the a member of the Federal Advisory Committee on the CNO Canal. Um, yeah, it's actually pretty important because there are two county positions. There's one for, there's two for Prince George's. There's several for Fairfax. There's, every county has some, and we've got two, and they've been empty for two years. Oh, so we haven't had any representation. No, nobody, and they've had meetings. And, uh, and you know John, he knows the, the CNO Canal, like backwards and forwards. Good. Um, Can they also, and he also advocate knows, for White's Ferry, get people over to the canal? <laughs> and he knows the Park Service people who okay. are a you know, big part of it. So um, Evan said he will uh, have a hearing on his nomination, and he wants to talk to him. I think uh, we're setting up a Zoom call for John to talk to him sometime in the latter part of June. So it won't okay. happen till June, but Evan's okay. aware of it. He is going to talk to John, and I can't imagine that he won't nominate him, but we'll see. Do we have a second? Is there a second nominated person as well? You said we can have two. Not that I know, no. Um, and I don't even know. Uh, I can't think of another name right now, but it could. I mean, there's, if nobody else is there, we could certainly propose another name. We, I was going to say, <laughs> let's stack, stack the, the deck. <laughs> decks and get as many... <laughs> You know, representatives from the Ag Reserve. Yeah, if somebody has, and John may have a John may have a name. So. Okay. Yeah, I'll check with him. I, I have an idea of a name. I'll okay. I'll share with That'd you be good. Later and, and run it by. Yeah. Second seat. All right. Um, okay. Uh, on the media side of things, uh, Susan, you can weigh in if you want to, but. Um, we, my MC Media, I think everybody knows, did a good piece on Springfest. They also did a really good piece on White's Ferry. Feeling um, Forgotten. Pardon the, me? The Feeling Forgotten. Yeah, I think that was YouTube. a great title. <laughs> yeah. Did, so what's our, um, how have we how have we spread that? Or or do we need to coordinate still on we, circulating it? Certainly all the council members, all the delegates have it. Um, and I don't know. I know Susan always tweets it, and we always they always post it on Facebook. So it's up. It's been up. Okay. Um, and I don't know if there's any other way we ought to be spreading it out or not. Share Susan. it to places like the Washington Post or anything else we should do from your standpoint, just to keep heightening it. Uh, yeah, I, I think sharing those things more than once is always a good idea. In case you missed it, and, and that's what I did with the um, the podcast. As well, you know, in case you missed it, listen to, you know, Link and Jim talk to, you know, Garrett from WTOP about how, how you guys, you know, how it's going in the western part of Montgomery County. And that was, you know, I, I'm going to give Link a big pat on the back here live on the air. He did an amazing job during that podcast. He and Jim together were super um, diplomatic in getting their point across and didn't leave one thing out. I think they did a really fantastic job. I hope you guys got to see it. I did. You guys were wonderful. Mm. Or um, hear it. <laughs> Either yeah, one. Listen, There's a video listening. of it, and, yeah. and it's also on um, on audio. Susan, uh, Fran told me at Springfest, 
that she had some other material she's going to release. Do you have any idea what other things she's going to be doing? Well, as far as she said, she said she has more material she's not done. So I don't know if that means there's another oh. story on White's Ferry or what it is. When she, when I had spoken with her last month, she sounded like she was trying to do a multi-part story on White's Ferry. Hmm. Yeah, I think her her goal is to actually be able to sit down with Libby and oh. and Chuck. Right. I don't know if that'll happen, but she really wants to sit down. With, she had told me that quite some time ago that that was one of her goals oh, okay. that she to really get them on camera, which would be great. You know, that would be that would be interesting to watch. All right, good. While we're still on that, I think and Niles is not on, but I, you and uh, Niles have been working on getting. Uh, we have a YouTube channel now for fair access with videos that we've got up. Is that pretty much put together at this point? Yeah, I haven't gotten any more information from Niles. I was able to pull several other videos that popped up when I searched YouTube um, about Poolsville, various things that had been done, stories and other um, history pieces that had been done about the town that he was going to upload to the channel. Okay. So I haven't um, seen anything else, but I think... That is a good place for you guys to share your, you know, store the media that's been done about you as well. So I will send him Fran's links as well as the link to the uh, podcast, even though that's not all on video. But it's it's still a good it's a good archive for those kinds of things. And the uh, so Martin, is there check a separate, it and go back. Yeah. Is there a separate you uh, Poolsville Town YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah I, I he had to create a brand new a brand new um, channel for Poolsville because there's one for the t I mean for the Fair Access Committee there's one for um, the town of Poolsville, uh -huh. but we wanted a Fair Access Committee one um, okay. with with the things that we're doing. Okay. In that regard, is Martin Ostermule is his piece going to be? I forgot that was that audio video or audio? It was just audio, right? Martin. Yeah, Austin that was, was just audio, but yeah. there were lots of pictures. That was a nice piece as so that's well. That's not a YouTube but, thing. Okay. Yeah, no, not necessarily. No, sadly, yeah. but okay. Um, you know, I think they're you know making sure that we have those all of those things archived properly, so when people ask, we can get it to them quickly. I mean, I have it all in a folder on my desktop, <laughs> but you know, I think it'd be something that would be beneficial. And we can talk more about that at a later date and, you know, a store, you know, a Google Drive or something like that where we yeah. can keep all of this. Uh, well, I think that's something Niles was working on, right? Was creating a shared Google workspace okay. for Good. us so that we could do more of that type of. Yeah, shared let me data. let me reach out to get on that. I will check with him on that. I, I would wonder if we almost would need like a, a workshopping day, not just for our committee, but maybe for all the town committees to, on like how to use, how to use these it. shared google spaces probably so mm -hmm. yeah so i'm not ask. honestly not familiar with it myself so okay hey, Wayne? yeah look as we're talking about uh creating you know different types of reels or your know, video pieces what do you think about the idea of taking some clips from the hearing um, that they, they're doing the, the different hearings they're doing this week, and when they're talking about Poolsville, I actually use even some of those snippets from them, like today, where um, Cindy was talking about the need for better transportation, and so when you have the council members chiming in that to things that seem supportive, that might be a nice piece to kind of weave into a video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Susan That's and I talked idea. a little bit about that because there was uh, quite a bit of stuff and that um, the comments, I was surprised that Sidney Katz was so vocal about transportation in our area, but he was. Good. So, yeah, that, I think that would be great to do that. Um, maybe with some lead happen? in the beginning or something, I don't know. Did yeah, that happen that today? today? Yeah, it was yeah, today. If you go back and you look at the one they did with DHS. I'll send you the they, uh, they mentioned, I'll send you the they link, actually mentioned Susan. They Fair Access also. Yeah. They, okay. they mentioned... Fair so, access uh, a couple of times. Yeah, uh, Marilyn yeah, actually. Uh, Marilyn actually talked about fair access, and when she did, several people said, "We, we know who they are." So she said, I th "I'm sure you're familiar yeah. with them." Oh yeah, we know who they are. So good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah, that is. You had about four different. You had four different uh, council members who had talked favorably about Poolsville. Yeah. Okay, that's really good. So that'd I be think great footage to add it to weave in. 
Yeah, and I and we can post that on social media saying, you know, we appreciate the support of our council members during these budget deliberations. Here's just a, you know, snippet of what they've been saying about us and, and you know, how they're, you know, doing their best to get us, you know, our fair share or, you know, give us fair access, that sort of thing. So but yet, if you ever hear of anything like that, just shoot me an email because I don't normally look at those sessions and I can, la I can grab the clip. I sent you the I sent you the clip of when Seth Adams was. Did you get that one when he was speaking about uh, the gym and about the community center and Greg Assant? I think I sent yes, it to you, but if yes, you, you got yes, that, yes. okay. Yes. Is there a yes. way to search the videos at, to Ed's point um, that the county has that they're stored after their hearings? I know yes. you can't. Can you do a, a search like do it like a? I I don't think you can do a topic one because you probably can't do something that. <laughs> But with something like they spoke, word, like just get or maybe the maybe the member, maybe Marilyn, you could pull up everything when Marilyn was speaking, or everything when because mm. they're likely to say things that would be yeah. supportive. Is that possible? Um, yeah, they do keep everything um, archived in this Granica system, and you can go back uh, to a specific date, you know, and and I'll give you the agenda of the um of the meeting and then there'll be the video clip there and you can pr scrub through pretty fast because they do a good job of you know titling at the bottom what they're talking about and you can oh, really? catch you know, your topic you mm -hmm. know if it's about transportation or if it's about health you know that's when you can stop the video and, and start watching and i'm you know you know the committees that she's on and yeah. but sometimes you know they do have joint committee sessions as well or sometimes council members will sit in on a committee that they aren't a member of because you know they're interested in what's going on so but they save everything all of that is on their website okay well, let's see what we can uh, do on Ed's point. Uh, there's some enough stuff we can pull together that might be good material for something we could release. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to look at that stuff from today. Yeah. I'm going to definitely look at that. Any other points on media? Um, not that I can think of at the moment. I mean, you know... I think you know what I said. What I've said before, which um, this isn't dying with the media. It's still you know the the rally happened, but we've had several media um, placements since then because people are seeing that this is a big issue, and a lot of it has to do with the work that you guys are doing and getting the information out and and how you handle yourselves. And I think it's phenomenal that you got the three council members out for. Um, Spring Fest, you know, that they're going to, Evan has talked to Link about doing a transportation um, meeting and having you guys all come in and, and kind of give testimony on the state of things as far as White's Ferry goes. That's really important attention that you're getting and the media will hone in on that as well. Once that meeting is on the agenda, I, I know there will be media there to cover that. So as long as you're keeping you know the the name out there and the, and the issue out there in a fashion that you're doing without being so volatile or, or you know um heavy-handed about it it's not going to go away and the media is still going to pick it up so i think the way it's going now it's a, a really good pace you're getting placements every you know three four weeks that are really good you know w you know wamu wtop mcm Bethesda Magazine, these are all really highly read and watched publications and listened to publications. So I'm impressed. <laughs> Did you take a look at a letter that the uh, Secretary of uh, Transportation sent us? Yes. Yeah. And that, um, as I, as I, when I saw that, I thought to myself, you know, Paul Wiedefeld has probably been in the job for six weeks. And he's probably got a million things on his plate. You know, that's a brand new job for him. And the fact that he took the time, A, to come on your meeting a couple of um, months ago and ask questions, and then B, answer your letter that you sent to him in a timely fashion and also give you some solid, um, you know, solutions that they'd be willing to participate in as far as getting grant funding or, you know, if, if things fall flat, you know, to consider state to state and county to county um, meetings at, you know, at their behest is... is I've never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you you don't rarely hear back from these people that quickly. So um, I think that's a huge positive sign um, for you guys as well. So um, that 
obviously there are people who um, you've got your you've got their ear in Annapolis, and so that's that's just as important as the county as well. Okay. Okay. Well, I think our next protest actually needs to be a watercraft tube chain across the river. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Summertime, everybody down at the river. <laughs> or a race or something. Tying <laughs> our tubes together across the river. <laughs> Symbolically, it would pretty, be pretty cool if people just kept doing it until they finally get to the other that's side. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's I, a good I visual. Think that's something we need to consider for like June, July. Yeah, I think those are good ideas to keep. And you know, we've got to keep the pressure on, and that's the best way to do it is to yeah. keep it in the media. Yeah, yeah. So, I think so. Yeah, I think so. And and again, you know, when when Luke came out to do the uh, DMV download, you know, he's a DC guy, and he even said, you know, it's really nice out here. I, you know, I'm I don't get out here that that often. So in in doing these types of things and bringing the media to where you are. Um, you know, they're seeing exactly what you're talking about. It's not just something that you're doing an interview over the phone or whatever. They're actually coming out to see what you're talking about. And it's pretty obvious that you guys, you know, are lacking in a lot of areas. So, um, you know, the, they're, your biggest, they're, they're your biggest advocates right now in the media to get them out there and see that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's worked pretty well so far. Right. Thank you, Susan. All right. Um, let's, I wanted to move on to new business, and I want to focus a little bit on the community center. And the reason I do want to do that is because of the budget. Um, maybe a little background, because I, Sarah wasn't here when we started Fair Access. But when we started Fair Access in 2018, we started it with a white paper. Mm -hmm. And we haven't really done anything like that since then, but um, in, in, it's actually our fifth anniversary this mm -hmm. year. So a couple things struck me when I thought about that. The white paper we did initially was all focused primarily on a new school and yep. a community center, a co-located community center. Yeah. But in that paper, we also laid out some of the themes that we use today, yeah. which is the, the lack of access to services, the distance, those things. Um, since that time, we've gotten to school. Uh, the community center, there is a, a pad there we know. There's a POR. So we're on the way. But the problem is that the CIP, which you know, we got the school to be fair, to be honest about it, and to be uh, totally upfront. I don't think if we try to get the school today, we'd have is anywhere near as yeah. easy a time be as we just did. Just because then. of where the county budget is. Yeah, yeah. at that time yeah. we were in a situation where they were pretty much flush with cash. The pandemic came, and that's when they got even more cash, and yeah. they actually shifted money from some ARPA funds into help get the school funded. So today we're yeah. not in that situation yeah. so getting the community center which could cost i'm guessing 25 million dollars in the cip next year and that's the the way the cip works is they have a two-year cip this year's cip is the second year of the the two-year plan yeah. the first year is the one that the county executive lays out basically a whole new set of agenda items things that they're going to build the second year is just add-ons where they can yeah. so this year is just is not much next year everybody's going to be rushing in trying to get their stuff funded. Right. So getting the community center in that yeah. FY, the next uh, cycle is going to be hard. So that got me to thinking uh, uh, about some ideas about how to begin this summer because okay. the, the way the CIP process works is that after the initial budget is adopted, already in the summer, the agencies already begin to think about next fiscal year. So basically in August time frame, they're already starting to submit initiatives and ideas into the process so that okay. by September-ish, when the MCPS says it's part of the budget, pretty much they've already got a lot of things from the agencies yeah. into the uh, county executive. Okay, so that's when we need to have our next ask. Right, so we need to have a letter, August. we need to have a letter this summer sometime that yeah. kind of lays this out, um, and it, we should have a POR that'll help us do that when that's done. And are you thinking um, new white paper that kind of reports on the progress that we've made from the old white paper and then lays out kind of what our next five year strategy is looking like? Well, I thought we might do something that would actually educate them about the bigger picture that we've been talking about, the hub and spoke idea and how yeah. that feeds into the notion that we need the services and pools that'll be the vibrant hub that can serve 
yeah. the rest of the county. And I did a draft of that, a 10-page thing, which you guys may have looked at. Yeah. But, if you, but that might be, and at the end of it, we do have, here's the things we need to make the hub as strong as possible. And then, obviously, White's Ferry is a part of the spokes to some degree. But it's, they're all in there at the end saying, here's the things we need going forward. So I was thinking maybe the white paper, mm -hmm. uh, again, what we did last time was that uh, Foundry took the draft that we did and made it look professional yeah <laughs> and, there, and put in tables and things like that i think if we i want you guys to take another look at it and see okay. what you think about it um just so you know lily chi has been talking about doing an event around the whole idea of what the western county economy and needs mm -hmm. and as you know she's a former economist and also she worked in economic development in dc and in Montgomery county mm -hmm. so I sent her a draft of just saying, look, nobody's committed to this yet. The county, the, the HH, uh, our committee hasn't adopted, but I want to see what you think because you're an expert. And she loved it. She said it's really got the guts of something. She said what we need is more data. Yeah. So what she would like to do is she said, okay, if you release the white paper and then we have a hearing sometime in the summer that yeah. she would help and probably chair, Yeah. Uh, then we can put a, a spotlight on all this stuff. Good. And invite people out, obviously, from the county to testify and, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So that, yeah. that's at a high level, what I was, what I was uh -huh. thinking. I love it. So. I love it. So um, do you want to resend around that Hub and Spokes paper? Right. Um, and then give everybody a timeline for when you want feedback by so that then Foundry also has time to then have it go through their revision right. process. Um, and maybe everybody could be identifying what, a di I mean, I, do you, I can't remember if you already refer to like the zip code study yep the HHS zip and code i actually study. have a and series of sources at the end there's 25 and that's one of them so and we can add in maybe the initial sort of unofficial reports from wumco and the yeah. health initiative that would be in there sure. grant the um, por if it's done which it yeah, will the be at POR. some point so it, there's some sort of maybe unpublished but mm -hmm. semi-official right data that's coming in that we can maybe add to it yeah it'd be a good idea so, Susan, that hearing, was part of what you and I talked about the other day. Did you catch all that? Yes. Okay. So if, so if yeah. the hearing is, let's say, July. Right. That's what and, we're thinking. And Foundry needs, Susan, how much time would you need? Uh, for the white paper? Yeah, to do your, your magic, your revisions. Mm, that's a good question. I'm not really on the creative side of things. Laura would be better to answer that, but I don't think it would take take very long you know i think they could get it turned around fairly quickly okay so if we try to have our revisions by the end of may yeah, or i would think that's plenty like of that, time yeah. then you can hand it over to foundry and then that will give you guys time to get it to lily g and then set up the right. hearing okay right by end of may second and, and this is another piece of this same thing sarah to kind of play this out a little further I mentioned it's the fifth year anniversary of Fair yeah. Access. So I was thinking at the Poolsville Day breakfast this year, mm -hmm. we like emphasized that point, mm -hmm. and we have a, a, another. We last year we had a good video, but I think this year it might be one that actually goes from to your point earlier about what the founding of what, what of why why we were founded, and there's, we have got a good some good video in the early days and what happened, and mm -hmm. go from there how the partnership has. I think flourished. I think it's fair to say, and mm -hmm. that's why the school was. So we we keep on the positive, but yeah, then some transition ways. to the whole kind of the white paper notion that there's a an economy out here, a culture out here, and that works differently. Mm -hmm. And it's partly because of distance. It's partly because we don't have many people. Um, but you know, we need some things that beyond that to keep this. Yeah area growing and, and healthy yeah. and so we'll kind of build on the video susan that you guys made where you talked about I, I thought they did a great job of saying did you know kind of you've got this food production center right. right here in the middle of montgomery county so kind of expanding on that a little bit yeah that was really well done yeah so that was kind mm -hmm. of the second piece is a, a kind of a really good video to launch the pools at a breakfast but we could also then use it after that and then uh the third thing I was thinking is that we do need a good letter, and um, we did it last year, and I'll send that around as a model for you that we mm -hmm. sent to the county executive. Last year, we listed five initiatives in no particular order. Um, this year, I think we had to focus on the community center. Okay. We don't think we should neglect mentioning 
this the pool and you know covering it and those things but i think we highlight that you know in the budget this year we need to see funding for the community center and it's our next big push yeah and i have no idea honestly sarah how much it's going to cost but i know i talked to gabe albernaz about it and he said it's going to be at least 17 million and probably closer to 25 million with the new construction costs right now so yeah. it's going to be expensive mm -hmm. but if we get that letter out sometime and again in the summertime like i think in august at the latest mm -hmm. then the agencies have not yet proposed everything they're still kind of formulating yeah they can and our letter is part out. of that process uh -huh. so it sounds like really the earlier the better yeah Okay. So I'll send the, what we did last year so you got a model in your high. And if okay. you had some thoughts about ways we had to position it, um, that would be good. So okay. when you think of what I'm thinking about here is essentially four pieces. One is uh, uh, the white paper and getting that done. One is the video that may, we may release only at Poolsville Day and then use it later. Maybe you guys, after we look at it, we say, you know, we should probably use it before then. And then just because mm -hmm. they're not most of the members won't remember what they saw anyway. We'll just use it yeah. again, yeah. possibly. A letter, and uh, I think that those are the kind of the the keys I think for us this summer. Yeah, that's going to be a busy summer, but <laughs> but I don't yeah. think there's any other way to get the community center if we don't get the funding for it. Yeah, in this cycle, I think it's going to be really hard. I don't know, Susan. Do you have you on the council, so you know more than I do about it? But that's that's my instinct anyway. Yeah, and I you know you've got their ear, so you know the squeaky wheel gets the grease and I think you know you're right in getting started on it early um, and getting your work to them and making sure that you know that you put the bee in their bonnet and they start thinking about it and I think you know we can go back to those other videos that we talked about before where the council members are on the record saying yeah. you know at the Poolsville High School groundbreaking you know this is the first step next we got to get the com community center you know and kind of have them, you know, see their, hear their own hear words about this. Over. You, you know, yeah. you are behind this. You do want to do this now. Now's the time. Yeah. You know, remind them that these are things that they've said in public on the record um, about. You know, you guys need this community center. Also, talk to possibly Keisha Davis, the new health officer, who I know has expressed to to link that. You know, she can't believe that you guys don't have um, these types of things where you are. Yeah. She can. You know, she the the health officer um, does have some influence over the council and the county executive. And um, back when I was working at the council many years ago, there was a health officer who sort of took on the Zika virus as a as a uh, passion and wanting to educate pregnant women about the Zika virus and all of that. And and she got she got her work through and approved by them. So you know, if you can get Keisha Davis to sort of you know, gently bring her on board and let her know what you guys, what we're trying to do to get this community center and, and possibly have some health services folded into that. She'd be a great person to, um, you know, testify along those lines. Um, so there are ways to sort of use the other players in, in the county who either have already said they think it's something that you guys need or have even said it off the record, who are voices that are powerful and important and, um, that's what they're there for. They're there for the community. They're there for the residents, and and you need to to utilize that. So, I think that could also be helpful. So we need uh, six members now if we're going to get an approval in a CIP budget. Um, mm -hmm. I think Will Jawando was very clear at the groundbreaking. So was Andrew, and so was um, there's a third council member there. Oh, Evan Glass was there. They all said mm -hmm. very positive things about the need to get a community center. And Mary Mark Elridge said that as well. So that's four. Mary. Four. Marilyn obviously has. Well, she wasn't there that day, but she has said it. And if we can find it where she said it. But maybe we need to just all add to it, Susan. When we know somebody would actually make those comments, we just do a quick video interview with them to add to it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, Don Lukey could, could feel this way as well. Um, you know, Lori Ann Sales, they were all, the, they're all, they all seem to be on your side and trying to get you guys what you need coming out to locals and meeting with you and, and listening to you and coming to the rally and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to ask, that's for sure. And we can certainly do that. I was also going to just throw out there that I, I think one of the 
first things we need to address in any new hub and spokes white paper is this idea of different metrics for out here. Yeah. And and maybe part of the research reference is in other rural communities. Here's an mm. example of, great idea. of how the metrics are different, how they use different, um, I don't know, methods for determining need um, that would be more suitable for our community. Yeah. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so let me uh, follow up with all of you guys with an email, just kind of listing out the three or four things this summer, and then I'll mm -hmm. attach the white paper as it is currently. It's fine. It's, I okay. think, in good shape. You can take a look at it. The, and, the hub and spokes yeah, paper that is going to be the new white paper. Right. We're going to call it white paper 2.0. Right. Got it. Uh, and then also the dra the letter that we sent last year to the county executive, so okay. you can see what we said last year. And if you got some thoughts about how to frame it, that would be okay. great too. Um, and uh, the video stuff, Susan, you and I talked about this earlier. I think a lot of that we've already got the material. We just yeah. may have to do a couple of interviews, to, like Maryland, for example, possibly. But um, we may have enough yeah. to, I, you know, yeah. you're better at this than I am. You certainly did a great job in the video you did for us before about who fair access mm -hmm. is. It wasn't in your face, but it did make the point, I thought, in a very good way. The, the point, the video yeah. you're talking about where they, they were talking yeah. about uh, oh, yeah. the agriculture like areas and all pictures that. pictures of the yeah. farm. It was very smooth, I really thought. Really well done. So something yeah. like that again, but this time it's yeah. like, remember when you said It was kind of like a tourist. I think, I think it was geared more towards tourism, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it was, but we were trying to also educate about who we were and what the yeah. needs were, so it both. Yeah, no, really well done. Mm -hmm. I think that, Thank that you. Kind of yeah, and I good. think that, yeah, if we can find, uh, we can dig up that video, we can easily put little clips together and, and, and put something together without a whole lot of um, extra effort. Yeah. And I, if, I, you, I, if you I, want to Davis, we can look into that as well. If you, if you think she would provide, you know, um, I, I, I know who she is. I've interviewed her before, so um, I'd be happy to reach out to her. You've already spoken to her, right, Link? Yeah, mm -hmm. and so is okay. Melissa. I think she's gotten, you know, Katie knows her. I think a lot of people got to know her now, so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. She was so we person. can talk about that if you want me to see if we can get her to, to say a few words about the need. Yeah, I think she would. If probably. she wants to take a position on that, um, I don't think it would hurt her at all. No. Yeah, she seemed really supportive when we met with her over at yeah. the Methodist Church. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think those are the main things I wanted to cover. Is there anything else anybody needs to, wants to cover or any issues to raise? Um, Maria, in terms of the petition, the one that was there that night, did uh, Knight keep or somebody keep uh, copies of all of the ones that were signed? Maureen probably did. Would it be Maureen, do you think? Because what I was thinking is we can go ahead and scan it in and then go ahead and use that as a way to at least get some notion that there are people like, people out here already supporting it. And if we add it to the town website and get more na names, that's fine. We could add those later. Just you know, keep sending them in saying, hey. And you can keep linking to all the nonprofits like ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Marie, well, when you see, are, are you re-sharing material in general from the Fair Access Committee, or if there's something that we would like you to share specifically, should we send that to you separately? Yes. Okay. The second one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we only share what happens in Fair Access at our board meetings. Oh, Got okay. it. Okay. And only figure out whether we need to act or not act. Yeah. Based on what we so, like... So like one of the most recent videos that came out called Feeling Forgotten um, by my MCM Media. I'll, I'll send that to you. Um, but I think because it's specifically, one of the things she highlights is the lack of healthcare services, um, especially specialists. And I think that in particular impacts our senior community. Um, that maybe that would be something that we could share with you and ask folks to just generally share it. As a, as a way of hopefully um, picking up even larger media sources on the story. So we have a weekly blog. 
Okay. Up to about a thousand people. Okay. And what we can do is we have a community activities section. Mm -hmm. And so we list everything that's non postal senior specific okay. in that of upcoming events. Perfect. And we could probably put it in there. There's okay. a there's an expert in the my MC media that's interviewed in healthcare and she does a great job and I won't mention her name but <laughs> 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 no she really did do a good job she hit it out of the park so <laughs> that was very good and you know the stats it was great because Marie it, we we put those together over the years with fair access but now uh, today at the uh, debate at the county at council Maryland used them. More oh, than once. Did. Good. And yeah, she was talking about the lack, you know, it was amazing. So, I mean, it's it. actually paying off. I think people are reading our material. So, that's good. So, that's great. All, All right. right. Anything else good. anybody has for the good of the cause? No. Do we need to officially adopt? We would have, could. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it has to do with fair access. Yeah. So, um, the county, we have a fair access So, what is the, um, is this just a social barbecue? Is, is there some, event? okay, a social event. And we're paying for the first 50 people who sign up. Okay. And who's going to be there? Is it a wide range of people from out throughout the county? Or? It was open to, to the entire county. Uh, uh, there were a little bit over 600 slots available. Wow. And we were able to garner 50 of them. Fantastic. Hmm. Um, is that something that you've communicated to Niles to post on the website? Um, I may have already done that, but okay. I can send it to him again. And then... Hey, quick, quick question too. When you, I'm just raising my hand. When you're done, I have a question for you. And yeah, one sec, Ed. And just my follow-up question to that was, um, and I'm curious, have you spoken to Katie at all, the Womco? I haven't done that yet. Um, yeah, she may have really specific people in mind who would appreciate the transportation and. And a free barbecue. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's supposed to be a day of fun. Yeah. So the bus will leave here at 950 and be back by 230. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, sorry, Ed. Go ahead. Okay. Ed, just, Murray, I was looking at it, and uh, is it for 55 and older or something I saw when I clicked on the link? Yes. And so I was thinking. Barbecue Bonanza is what it's called. That's great. Right. So is the 55 and, and older. So Correct. is that something we want to make sure, like if you have some folks that are younger than that who might want to attend, is it going to be, we were like I'm thinking about. We were very strict in when we were promoting it that this was something that the county had requested. Hmm. So they're being very okay. specific. Because for us, it would have been, you know, if you want to go and you call yourself a postal senior. We yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was just thinking about if you had some uh, some of your elected officials from county council who are not in their 50s yet, but might be good for them to go and see what you're doing. Yeah. Like, like a young They're probably honorary there, members. Or a lawyer, or a lawyer <laughs> sales, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that they would, uh, I'm just thinking of people also who might need like a assistant. Okay. So, or, or a young Sarah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> so just well, that sounds really fun. All right. Uh, we probably should adopt the minutes. I think Adam's not on, but uh, I'll ask. I'm sure he would vote yes if he was here. So uh, I've sent them around. If anybody mm -hmm. would make a motion, we can adopt those. And that basically the last business I think we've got to. All right. I make a motion to adopt the minutes from the last meeting. 
April 2023. Thank you. <laughs> From April Ed, 2023. Ed, do you second that? Ed? Hey, Ed, can, are you able to unmute and second I, I'm, that? I was trying to... I was trying to, I second it. I was trying to unmute. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, all of those, 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 those in favor? Me. Yeah, aye. 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 Thanks. All right. Good. Thanks for being at the meeting. Susan, uh, I'll copy you on the email that we sent to the members, and we'll go from there. So thanks for your good help. Thanks. Thank you. See ya. You know, well, look, I'll share this with you too. It looks like all week, you know, they have different things because I know they had one the other day that uh, I will.